Good afternoon, welcome back to Money Magic's next workshop. Uh, this is painting number two that I usually do in normal workshops. Uh, it's called Poplars on the Ept from 1891. It's oil on canvas. It's actually, the original is 100 centimetres tall by 65 centimetres wide. This painting is currently in private collection, apparently. Um, so I don't know where it is. Okay. Now we can go through the setup one more time. Just to move that out of the way. So table covering, extra table covering. And then to make things easy, we can have our newspaper on top. So when it comes to tidying up, all you've got to do Screw this up into a bottle and straighten the bin. Right, paper. So here we have mixed media pad. It is 250 GSM, so it's pretty tough stuff. Let me just get that into position. Okay, right, so we've got our paper, we've got our protective coverings. The things you will need, we have the usual acrylics. So we've got two shades of cerulean blue, one slightly darker than the other, and a white. And that will be for our skies. And then we have 12 times 12 milli meter watercolor tubes we will be using the paint straight out of the tubes so it must be tubes blocks are not for this project and then oil pastels i'm using pentel a box of 50. so again you can get by with as few as 12 but the more the merrier. Okay, good quality pastels will certainly help. The other things we will need is ordinary kitchen roll. Um, again, this is very basic stuff from Aldi. Uh, if you can use better quality, it will last a little longer and you will get a better result. Uh, but again, it's not totally necessary. And then you will need a pen or a pencil. I'm going to use a Sharpie so you can see what I'm doing that much clearer. Um, the best thing to use for your drawing out would be a flesh color pencil if you've got one. Again, not totally essential. Anything will do. Okay. And the last bit of equipment you will need, of course, the hairdryer. So this is for the end of the painting session and the painting must be touch dry by the end. So you can keep touching until you're not getting any tacky feel coming off the painting and then you know it's ready for stage two and we can start applying the oil pastel. Okay, let's get started. Uh, as usual, I'll try and tell you something about the painting as we go along. Um, but I really, really want to get cracking on this so we can get it done in the two hours. So looking at the painting, uh, again, I'm not going to trim the paint, the picture to match the actual uh, measurements of the original. Uh, we'll get somewhere as close as we can. Uh, so we have seven trees uh, with their reflections and the riverbank on the other side of the river. Um, so we have three families of trees. We have two on the right hand side, we have three in the middle, and we have two on the left hand side. What we find is the trees in the foreground actually go from the top to the bottom. And we have an element of perspective that comes across in a zigzag down to the riverbank, which comes across here. Okay, so tricky 
trickiest bit of this picture is the spacings between the trees. Because the trees on the left are actually quite close to the edge of the canvas, the trees on the right are quite a way. We've got similar sized gaps, gap one, gap two and gap three are all very similar. Um, the biggest gap is here between tree five and tree six. Okay, let's get some trees down. So we are going to go top to bottom. I'm going to come in approximately four to five centimeters. I'm going to go for a reasonably straight line. And then tree number two, similar size gap, slightly smaller. So we're just marking in where these trees sit on the canvas. Tree number three, again, similar size gap, approximately four centimetres. We're getting somewhere near the middle. We'll take that one top to bottom as well. Okay, tree number four. So we have a smaller gap. It is actually just past centre. So again, I'm going top to bottom. This area here is all going to disappear. Okay, so we've got one, two, which are the two trees on the right, three, four and five. So we're going back to a gap of approximately that size. Now again, if we get these spacings wrong, we're going to have an opportunity to move the trees. So we will be refining the picture as we go along. OK, and now we can drop the height of the trees. So we're not going to go all the way from the top for the last two. because they actually start about two thirds of the way up the page. And the largest gap in between trees is here. So this one we want to make about six or seven centimetres. And we're going from two thirds of the way up the page. So if we say one third, two thirds, so we're starting here. And then the very last one is actually just splitting the gap that we've got left. And that is the layout of our seven trees. Now, the next thing we're gonna do is our riverbank. So this sits approximately one quarter of the way up the page. So if you can imagine that here we have about halfway, somewhere here. So split that again. So we end up with, we're gonna put a line right there. This is riverbank meeting river. So I'm aiming at one quarter, again, nice and flat. That's our horizontal. What we actually have are bushes above. So I'm going to mark these in approximately two centimeters above. So this is just to remind me where that riverbank is, tailing off at that side. And then we have the repeat. So what happens is the shadow actually stretches out along the trunk of the tree. So we end up with this kind of pattern. So a smile going over each of the reflections in the water there. So that has marked out the whole of the riverbank here. OK, now we've got our verticals, we've got our horizontals. Now we're going to look at the perspective of the tree canopy. So. What we're actually going to do in this top corner, we've got another one of those Monet pizza slices with the point of the pizza and the crust. So we want to mark this top corner off. So we end up with a nice healthy pizza slice there. The canopy of the trees is actually going to overlap. Sky is going to come in to this section. OK, now the bottom of the canopy comes off the page approximately here, and it comes off the page approximately here. So 
If you say that this is halfway, just above halfway, we've got the bottom of the canopy of the trees, and then one quarter of the way down is where the canopy disappears off the page. So again, we're going to have a nice curved line, quite shallow. Okay, so in this area here is the entire canopy. So all of the leaves on the tops of the trees fit in here. We do have some canopy in shadow that will just break this line and just come a little bit below that line. Okay, right. So we've got the canopy. Then, if you imagine this is the top of a Superman S, we've got a weird perspective coming back in and across and back across. So we end up with a kind of a U shape. So just underneath, uh, just on halfway actually, we're going to have a kind of U lying on its side and it comes off the page on this side before it comes back. So that's the outside of the U. The inside of the U comes to one tree, two tree, three tree, just there. And that comes back to this point, tree number six. So this is the outside of the U, this is the inside of the U, okay? So that stops here. Then we have trees six and seven. Between tree six and seven, we have one tree, like a large teased out cotton wool blob, and it pops out on this side and this side, but it sits more or less in between trees six and seven. Tree one, Tree two, tree three, tree four, tree five, tree six, tree seven. And that is our basic skeleton. Now, if you want to, if you look at the pattern of the top branches, you will actually be able to see that we have some V's coming off the top of the poplar trees up here. We don't need to be too accurate. This particular tree splits into two, so we have a V. And then we can just add one or two branches just to remind ourselves where they're going to be. Not essential as we are going to draw out the trees with our paint tubes. Okay, so that is the basic design of the painting. Okay, so we've got our skeleton. Now it's time to flesh that skeleton out. So we're gonna take the darker of the two cerulean blues, and we're gonna put a blob the size of a 10p piece, so a domed 10p piece in the top left hand corner where our pizza slice sits and then just under that we are going to get it open there we go we're going to have a couple of smaller blobs one on the left and one on the right just at the top of the tree canopy now we're going to put a blob in each one of these sections here so Starting on the right, we're going to have a blob at the top and a blob at the bottom. A blob at the top. So you can see we're following the canopy and we're following the U. Okay. So we have got darker blob in the top left hand corner, two smaller blobs of the lighter blue. We've got two blobs in each section, section one, section two, section three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 
Now we're going to put some blobs of light in the bottom sections. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, now we're going to start our fleshing out process. So again, we've got a piece of tissue, we're going to screw it up into a nice loose ball. So we want all of those triangles and facets and we are now going to use that so I'm going to dip into my top reservoir and I'm going to start padding out my sky, making sure that I come right into the tree line. Just steering away from the lighter blue at the moment. So I'm filling that pizza slice in the top left hand corner. Now, I'm also going to start to build my riverbank with the same medium blue. So I pinch from the top, padding into, so this is my underpainting, padding into that riverbank. From left to right. Okay. Now I'm going to twist my tissue. Again, making sure I've got lots of nice triangles and facets. And I'm going to rework the sky using the lighter blue, bringing it in to the canopy area. because we can see through the canopy, which has started to bin at this stage. It's quite late summer. Okay, now we're gonna do exactly the same thing. With these blues, we're gonna be working our way down from the canopy, taking that reservoir, making sure that we Fill the space as we go. So I'm going right into the canopy because I can see a lot of sky through those trees. Okay. Now, as we discussed earlier, sky is darker in the top left hand corner, gradiates down. So as we come down and down and down, it's getting lighter and lighter and lighter. So I'm going to twist my tissue again. This time, I'm going to pinch from one of my blue reservoirs into the white. I'm going to be working my way up. Inside the U shape. I'll carry that on just in the first gap. So here where the U touches the other side of the paper, there's a little bit of sky here. And now I'm going to work up. between the tree gaps. Okay. So we've lost quite a lot of our original drawing, but I can still see, I know where these trees are because I can see where they come off top and bottom. So even though we've lost quite a bit in the middle there, I still am aware of where my trees should be. And again, we're just trying to get rid of the white paper. Bring that right down over the bushes. The bushes being closer, we're going to lay that on top later. Okay, All right, let's just get rid of any offending bits of white paper. There we go. Good. Right, now we're going to try 
slightly different technique. So we're going to be using our dark blue. It doesn't matter if yours is not Prussia blue, any sort of medium blue will do it. I'm going to go with the darker Prussian blue on this occasion. What I'm going to do is squeeze the tube gently. So where we normally dot, dot, dot paint out of the tube directly, instead of dotting the paint, I'm going to squeeze and drag the paint. I'm going to follow my tree trunks, including their shadow from top to bottom. I'm going to have to turn my paper for this one. So starting at the very bottom, I've got some paint coming out. So I'm just squeezing the tube very, very gently and dragging the paint as I go. And these tree trunks are quite kinked. what they are is very thin. So again, don't have to be completely accurate, but somewhere along the original line. And then when I get into the tree canopy, I can have a few branches just hint at a few branches. Tree number two, exactly the same thing. Start at the bottom. Squeezing very, very lightly and dragging the paint, following that original line. And this tree, when I get into the canopy here, then it splits into two. So as I said, there's always an opportunity to rectify any mistakes or refine what we've done already. Okay, so we've got tree one, tree two, now tree three. Again, we're going to start at the bottom. Squeezing and dragging, squeezing and scraping. Once we get into the canopy area, we have a number of V's coming off the main trunk. That's the first one, then we jump. Second one, there's the main trunk, which disappears into the canopy. And then we've got another V here. So we've got one, two, three. Now we'll go to the tree in the middle. Start it again at the bottom. Just dragging that. Squeeze and drag. Up to the canopy. And at the point it reaches the canopy, it splits into three. One, two, three. Almost like a chicken's foot. And then I'm going to take the central trunk just a little bit higher and just hint at a couple of branches in there. Okay, now that's tree one, two, three, four. Bigger gap, tree number five, squeeze and drag. all the way up to the canopy line, which is here. And then we'll have another chicken's foot. One, two, three. And we can just hint at another couple of branches up there. Tree number six, squeeze and drag. We've reached the canopy line and this tree separates one, two, three, 
and we can have a one, two, just hinting at branches. And then the very last tree. Squeeze and drag. Just to the other side of the U shape here. So we've just got to the top end of the U shape, and this tree is going to split into quite a large chicken's foot. So we're going to have one, two, three, and again, a couple of hints over the branch action. Okay. Just to finish off with the blues, again, back to my same tissue. Now where I've got, still got liquidity in the sky, I'm gonna pinch from there. I'm gonna pad in between the reflections of the trunks. just building up these reflections pinching from the top and working our way down For the next part, we're now going to start adding our yellows. So the yellow is going to be scatterbombed through that whole top section where we mark the canopy with the pizza size and the curve from just above middle to just about one quarter. So we're going to have a scattering of yellow in there and then we're going to follow the U shape with yellow coming down to this point here and we're not forgetting this tree in the distance that hides between these two trees and then of course we've got reflections here 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 and in gaps one and two okay so let's take our yellow canopy section so I'm squeezing lightly what I want are lots and lots of little yellow dots all within that canopy so I'm giving them a liberal scattering of dots we have to do this quite quickly or the paint will dry That's the top canopy. Now we've got to do the U shape. So again, I'm gonna put a couple of dots, the first ones. sticks out here that comes to the edge of the page. One, two, three, four, five. And now we're working our way back. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And one, two, three. And not forgetting this tree. One, two, three. One, two. Okay, that's our yellow pattern. Now we're going to repeat with our yellow ochre, so our brown yellow. And again, we're gonna have a liberal scattering of small ochre dots in that top section. Now the top part 
part of the U is quite light until we get into gaps one and two. So I'm going to add one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, one, two. Put an extra one in there. So I haven't put them in these areas in the top part of the U, but I have put them at the top in gaps one and two, and then just one or two dots in each section as it comes back across just above the riverbank. Okay. Now I'm going to take my brightest red, which is vermilion, and again I'm going to have a scattering of little red dots in the top canopy. These can be very small, so we're going to end up with some blending of the red with the yellow, the red with the ochre, the ochre with the yellow. So these are very small dots, I'm hardly squeezing the tube at all going to be putting some white dots in with the red because I would like some of this to turn pink. Okay, now, while I've got the red, I'm also going to go from the right hand side to not in the first gap, not in the second gap, but in the third gap, go with three dots of red, one, two, three. Fourth gap, one, two. Fifth gap, one, two. And then the sixth gap, just one. Okay. Now, while I've got this tube out, I'm also going to give myself some dots of red along these tree trunks. So not the first one, but the second one. One, two, three, four, five. Third one, yes. One, two. And the next one, one, two, three, four, five. And just a little bit for tree number five. Okay, so that's done with the red. Now, as I said, we're going to put some white dots up in the canopy too. So I'm taking my white watercolor Just like I did with the red, I'm going to do a literal scatter bomb of white throughout the whole canopy section. Okay. Now, again with the white. I'm going to put one, two, one, two, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three. So just in the top of the U as it comes back across, this section is much lighter than any of the other sections. Okay. Right. We need a new piece of kitchen roll. Scrunching it up to make sure I've got my triangles and facets. And now I'm going to be potato printing in the canopy. So I'm working in, those are ochres. Twist. Just trying to avoid those dark blue areas. So I'm working around them. Doesn't matter if I pick up some. Because again, we have foliage and shadow hiding in there as well. Just trying to work my way 
through the foliage. Again, we're going to twist to keep it clean. Looking at the original, padding those colours together. Making sure I'm not blocking out the light blue sky. I'm just following the shapes of the canopy. Have another twist. I'll work those in. a little bit of the blue for our foliage in shadow which is just at the borderline of the original line. Pinch a bit of blue. And we'll just have a little bit of foliage in shadow which is following that curve. So we're breaking that line. There we go. Okay. Now, we need to go back to our Prussian blue. And we are going to put a dot above and a dot below. So again, we'll have a twist. So this time I'm going to work that horizontal band in, building up to my trees. So I'm dabbing away, up, following those original curves. So we've worked our riverbank in. Okay, so I've got a clean area of tissue. Now I'm going to just pad in the U shape, starting of course with the very, very lightest and furthest away. So I'm padding them in. Just trying to avoid Spreading that dark blue too much. Working in between the trunks of the trees. Don't worry too much if you pick some up. It's going to make the texture of the canvas much richer. Later, we're going to refine with our oil pastels. So we're getting a mix of sky blue with the canopy yellows. So I'm just going to give it a twist again. Have a clean bit. And work those yellows in, the whites, the blues. Now I've come to the very end. I'm going to pinch a little bit of red. Work those ochres and yellows in. Another twist. A little bit dry in there. I have to add a bit more paint. Okay, right. So 
have another piece of tissue. Now, just where it's got a little bit too dry, down here, I'm going to add a bit more yellow. Sequenced in a little bit of extra yellow, clean tissue. Lots of interesting angles in there, and I'm going to work those in. Okay, um, right, we had a slight break in the proceedings yesterday. Uh, as I got a telephone call, typically right in the middle of filming. Um, so, all of my paint has gone dry. And I still haven't finished getting rid of my construction lines. And I've got some reflections to slot in here. Uh, in squares one, two, three, and little bits. Especially over here in number six. Right, so... As all my paint is dry, I'm going to add some more paint. So I'm going to start with my yellow and put myself a couple of healthy blobs in sections one and two, section three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then in the water below. One, two, three, skip, skip, skip. And then we've got the last three sections. One, two, three on the right hand side. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. On the left hand side of this square. Okay, now we will add to that with yellow ochre, same areas. So again, nice healthy blobs, like a smarty. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Two, four, one. And in the reflections. One, two. One, two. One, two, three. So we've got some yellow dots, we've got some yellow ochre dots, and we're going to have a few tiny dots of vermilion. So in square one above, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, one, one, one. I'll have a little tiny one in the tree. In the reflections, one, one, one. There are some reflections here in orange. I'm just going to put one, two, three tiny dots in there. Two, three tiny dots in there. And then we're into the last three squares. Left hand side, three dots of red. One, two, three in square number two. And one, two, three at the bottom of square number one. Okay, paints away, piece of tissue, nice and loose, lots of triangles, and we're going to dab that in. And what I'm going to try and do is make sure I get rid of my construction lines at this stage. So I'm just padding the yellow and yellow ochre together, hiding those construction lines. Bringing it right up to the tree. Same in square two. Hiding the construction lines. Don't worry too much about the tree trunks. We're going to work those in again. And again, bringing the paint right down. 
going to give that a twist because I've got a little bit too much red on it. So I'm back with clean. Looking at the original, just check it, see how high this part of the U comes in. Bringing it right down below the height of the riverbank because we're going to lay the riverbank on top. shrinks down so a wedge it gets thinner and thinner and thinner until we get to the tree. That tree reaches up probably three quarters of the way. Here we have our scattered bright yellows and whites at the top of the U-bend and this tree here fills three quarters of the space in between. So I can work that in. shape to work on top of. Now in the bottom reflections we can first pad them just making those reflections more interesting because there's a little bit of shadow or reflection activity going on here same here same here and then we move into the last three boxes. So again, just gonna twist that. I don't want to have too much red. So looking at the original, seeing how much of the space is filled. And in the first box, the reds, yellows, ochres, oranges are more towards the left hand side of the square and it fades to sky blue. Let's take that out. Okay, now something else I could do with the reflections at the bottom, once I've padded them in to try and fill the gaps, I can actually just swipe the paint and it will give me the beginnings of my flat water reflections. Just dragging the paint horizontally. Okay. Right, that is pretty much it as far as the paint is concerned. Um, Just looking at my canopy, I'm going to do some extra dots here. Uh, we've got good shadow going on, but I want to bring out some of the areas and make them a little bit more intense with the paint before I go back and work in with the oil pastel. So if we look at the top left hand corner, um, what you'll notice is the pizza slice actually has some teeth. One tooth, two teeth, and the third one is here. So we've got one, two, three points that come into this tree canopy here. And we've got some slightly more intense yellow ochre here on either side of this kind of shark tooth shape. Same here. And a little bit less up here, but we're going to put some extra ochre in there anyway. So this is our first area. So in that first tree, uh, the canopies of tree number seven and tree number six. So there's the sharks too. And just here, I want some extra ochre. And then moving onto this side, it's a little more scattered in that area and the same here. Okay, now obviously a lot of these tree trunks are going to lighten. You can see they're actually cast in yellow light, um, but we are going to do that as we refine with our oil pastels. Now, the last thing I'm going to do is just pad in that 
the yellow ochre. So again, just have a little twist with the tissue. A nice broken pattern. done this all in one go uh, uh, if I'd finished it last night um, my paint would be a lot wetter it would still be sticky to the touch although it did dry quite quickly in this area um, so as I've got some fresh paint on I want it to be dry so I'm gonna dry it anyway so again we want it to be touch dry so we'll keep touching it until it stops being tacky okay Okay. 